Lori. service hours. That's right. That's right. Service hours. All right. Um, Ken, do you want to give us a... Yes. Uh, the uh, Salvation Army of Kettleville, the year that we raised $3,001.94. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. And I want to give an official board welcome to our newest member, Michelle Napier. Michelle. Oh, you want to go potty? Bianca and Anita, would you like to stand and tell us a little bit about the transitions that are happening? And Bianca is still going. She's still going away. And she's been with the Brett Rebecca family since August. <laughs> and uh, uh. gotten to to see how that family lives and does things in America. But now it's time for us to find the second or third, you know, couple more families for her to get the true American experience. Um, so we're, we're reaching out to you all. Um, on the way, I was asking the other questions, things like, um, you know, what's what's um, the best well, thing, you know, for exchange here? Yeah. Um, And she thinks when it's 50 degrees out, it's hot. <laughs> it is so hot outside. Where's your coat? She said, it's so hot in high school. 
Panama. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Anita, will you share just a little bit about like we're looking for six weeks time awesome, or I mean it's it's yeah, I mean yeah. if if we if, if ideally it would be wonderful for us to have two as well rather just one other to switch one is two two times. But honestly, if they can switch three times, that would be amazing. And then you know you can have it uh, looks like six weeks and then six weeks, that would be about what it would be. You know, otherwise it would be about 12 weeks for somebody to finish finish the year. It's not, I don't know. It might be 99. Yeah. I don't know sure when school. Two nine weeks. Two nine weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's a, a way for your family to, to get to know a little bit more about the culture yeah. than the country. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really different from Virginia. Yeah. Um, you know, it's dope there now. And it's cold. Like negative 50. Can I add one more thing yes. too? So, if you are interested, we do need to get your background check done through Essex, which is the uh, organization that we deal with for, for the exchanges. That is not slow, but it's not fast either. So, if you have an inkling that you're interested in it, we can get you in that process now so that when it's time, you're all, already all set. So, please uh, consider that and get, let's get you in the process, even if you're considering it. Here's the other thing the club gives our student a stipend. Two hundred dollars a month. So it's not like you're paying, a, a, you know, a lot of expenses. You know, when we hosted students, we either, you know, had food for lunch. If they want to pack lunch, and we usually gave our students lunch money. But if they could, act, they have actual money to do that. Orange County's they, they free lunches. Oh, free yes. lunches. Oh, wow, that's even better. So you know, they have they have two to go to the movies and go out with friends and do all that kind of stuff. And um, Bianca's used to public transportation, which is not here. So, you know, it, it's very different. They can just kind of go and do things. But the family, you know, maybe if there's an older sibling that can drive, they're able to drive them to go to movies, to go shopping. I mean, Parjay is, is a big deal <laughs> to, to go to Parjay and shopping. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, Cracker Barrel and so on. I know, we're going to get Okay, so please, 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 let me know. All right? Thank you, ladies. Nice to see you today, Bianca. All right, and then I'm going to turn the floor over to our district governor, Kathy Cantor. She's going to share some news about the district conference. <coughs> I want to just say one thing about the youth exchange program. There are very few programs that hook you, but every family that has hosted a student has a wonderful story to tell and typically has hosted many students. It becomes that program that you want to be part of. It's a wonderful way to know Rotary. It's a wonderful way to know another culture. And it's an amazing connection. And that's really what Rotary is all about. Connections. So do give it some serious thought, and you're lucky enough to trade off and be able to say, okay, I can do this for nine weeks. And you might even be able to consider partnering <coughs> on those. It may not have to be. So the fact that you as a club are hosting and work together on that, that's a great, great way to go forward. So again, I encourage um, you to consider it because it'll hook you. District conference. And I'm here to just give you some of the down and dirty details because it's here, it's coming fast. We are the first weekend in March, the third through the fifth. We will be more of a convention this year as opposed to a conference. We will not be all in one hotel because the Salem City Center will come and go throughout the day. It is 
It's going to start on a Thursday with the first part of our service project, building beds. And we will have four service projects that will go on during conference. The walk part of it, the polio walk, because you can, actually starts now. You can, there'll be a form on the website, pull it out to either pledge walking miles or just send me money, either one, make a pledge, polio. Second is build a bed. We're gonna build a hundred beds at conference. I secretly am hoping that this will be a way that our area of the district will learn about the partnership with Sleep in Heavenly Peace and we form our own chapter here with the support of our three areas, one, two, and three, to continue to build beds for our neighborhood children because there are children that are sleeping on the floor. We will have a Rise Against Hunger program that will be predominantly um, fed by our Interact students. We will have a whole day program for the Interact on Saturday. And that will be both the Interact students and some of our uh, Rotarians. There will be all the regular things. We have some dynamite speakers lined up. Uh, some you maybe met before, they're somewhat local, some from Jamaica. So it's truly an international convention. It will be worth your while to come. Even if you can't come for the whole weekend, come for a day, come for part of two days, whatever works. It will begin on Thursday afternoon with the service project and go throughout the weekend and until Sunday. 149 is the registration. There are eight hotels. We, area two and one, are sharing the Fairfield because we're hosting area one. This is the first time two clubs have gone together and said, yeah, we'll host. So instead of my little 20 member club doing everything, Winchester Club is helping. So we have two hosts and we have a home club. The Salem Club actually meets at the Salem Civic Center. So when I say home club, we're in their space. So it will be a wonderful weekend. I would like all of you to come. I'm excited to see so many of you here today and old friends. I feel like I have lots of old friends in this club. So I'll look forward to seeing you. Any questions that I might answer or I didn't share? Our exchange students will be there. They'll be part of the program. We'll look forward to hosting that. Looking up, oh, really? Where? <laughs> she knows. <laughs> oh, didn't know. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you all there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Lloyd. Rick made a good point last time that hotel rooms are 99, which is yes. less price to and February 3rd is that cutoff date for both registration and hotels. So $99 a night, free parking. Okay. Lori, can I put a plug in, yes. please? So if you haven't been to conference before, I would ask you to consider going this year, especially next year, because in three years, our club is the one that's responsible for it. I'd love for that not to be your first <laughs> conference is the one you have to work. So um, if you can go this year, it's going to be a great experience. And then come next year, so then you're a veteran when it's time for us to host the, the conference for, for my district governor year. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> That's a selfish plug, but it is what it is. <laughs> All right. I also want to mention that on your tables, you're going to see some cards um, that say be our guests. And Brett was reminding me these were printed right before COVID, and then we still have lunch. So we're getting these out again. Please take one or two off the table, invite someone, have lunch for free with us for two weeks, and learn about Rotary, what Rotary is about, and get them into the club and get them to do some good stuff with us. So grab one of these, um, two of these, and take them out, get them, and invite someone in. Happy dollars. Who's happy? <laughs> All right, Jamie. I've got five happy dollars today because I look around and I see a tenant. Beginning, beginning, if you don't begin, little collectors will recover sugar every week. But thank you for being here today. We have plenty of room for more tables. We need to fill this room. So I have five happy dollars for Carolyn and 
my sweet wife, and you know how we got 59 years. We started really early, very early. <laughs> <laughs> so don't tell her that I only put five bucks in there. You <laughs> put a big amount of <laughs> It's our secret. <laughs> I, uh, I'd like to give you an update on my son-in-law. Uh, my daughter spoke to me a year ago. Uh, my son-in-law's latest lab work is kidney function is holding at 10%. Uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to keep him off of dialysis. And they have a donor. Um, so we're very happy. Absolutely. Um, I have another friend, child. Lincoln had a great girl. She's in the sixth too, so that makes seven for us, which is beautiful. And Joshua's. What's her name? Emily. Emily. Okay. Happy Dollar Store. Uh, Sailor Theater Company. We have done casting for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and I'm guessing most of you in this room are old enough to remember that movie. But uh, if you haven't, Sidney Poitier was the main star of that. I think won an Oscar for it. And he passed away last year. So in his honor, we're going to do Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. We'll be at Laurel Ridge Community College in Middletown. So we're not that far away. Um, and I'll give you guys updates. It's going to run in March. So I hope you guys can come. Happy dollars. Three happy dollars. Happy dollar that we have Chapel here with us. Thanks for being here today. Happy dollar for Bianca. Thanks to Bianca for being here today. Um, and for Katie, my daughter, um, she's my UVA rotor actor and she goes back to school next weekend, but it's been good to have her home, especially after all the turmoil that she went through in November at UVA. Um, and that part of that happy dollar is because she just started yesterday with Front Royal Family Practice. Um, she's getting some volunteer hours which will turn into some work for her. And she's excited about that. That's a her career path. So I'm very excited about that. <coughs> Thank you for listening about conference. And I forgot one thing. We tend to do RV hookups right on the Salem Civic Center mm -hmm. property. That's also on the website. Okay. Thank you. All right. Attendance report. <laughs> <laughs> President Lori, fellow Rosarian. Yes, today we have 37 in person and eight online. We have two Disney Rosarians, Michelle Smeltz and our district governor, and will the following members have introduced their guests? Lori. I have my daughter, Katie Bostock, with me here today. You guys already met Bianca. <laughs> President Laurie, fellow returns, my guest today is Sarah Jowski with the Air Serve. All right. And so the reason, the other big reason you're here today, we are going to hear from the executive director of the Warren County Habitat for the Community, Andrea Ross. Did I say that correctly? Yes, good. Okay, I practice. <laughs> she is a Warren County native. She is a mom of two um, recent Skyline High School graduate, graduates. Um, she has some experience in single and multi family home maintenance, repair, and management. She is active in the local Warren Page NAACP, among other community organizations. Um, if you go to their Facebook page, you will see that she's been hopping this past year. They did their first part of the gala, a yard sale, the golden room, which I did see this picture with, a little video break with that golden room in the summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you want to keep it. Um, she's done a gospel music festival and an oyster roast. And I am happy to present to you Andrea Ross. <laughs> Thank you. 
One, thank you very much for inviting me back. You're always, always so gracious to take the time to invite me here. Just uh, appreciative of the invite every time I'm able to have one. So um, today, <coughs> we're just going to talk about habits. For the most part, I'm just going to speak from my heart. Yes, I have the presentation, and that falls in line. I am not a fall in line type of person. I am a it, it means something to me, and I get up every day, and this is what I want to do. I want to impact lives. I want to change lives. I want to be part of something that in my life is over that I can say that I'll put something back into this world. So I'm hoping that you guys can follow along with the presentations, but also my way of presenting. Um, what I found in this past year is a lot of people really don't know what Habitat does. Everybody knows the name, but when you think of Habitat, what do we do? <laughs> so, a lot of people, when they think of habitat for humanity, we're often thought of very closely to serve um, families in poverty, um, severely low income families. That's not what we do. Um, we serve your neighbors. We serve teachers and first responders. We serve people who are low and middle income. So that's 30 to 60 percent of the area of the income. These are the families that we're reaching out to. Uh, the families that make a difference, the ones that are in your grocery store. They're up every day, they're working every day. You know their families, you've seen them, they're just Slightly behind the I make enough money to really be present. These are the families. They're invisible. Um, we call them the working poor. Uh, United Way calls them Alice families. But you see them every day. <laughs> you don't think they need help. You don't think they're struggling behind closed doors. What are they going through? You don't know that. They're figuring out dinner and food and this for their every day they're making it. So these are the families we try to reach. Um, so let's just go through this lovely little list so I can keep my, my head on straight. So Habitat started in the 60s in Georgia. For us here in Warren County, we've been around since 92. So this last year was our 30th year. Um, we built 18 homes a lot of people um you know that Warren County had a habitat for humanity, um, which was really sad to me. Um, because 18 families have been impacted by efforts to work and the energy of Warren County Habitat. Now, Warren County Habitat is a collection of participation by everybody. So local tradesmen, um, Anyone, you, you know, if you're a CEO and an executive, you want to put paint on the walls. These homes have been built by Warren County. Um, and I just want to maintain that uh, everybody in Warren, Warren County still has that same place where we believe in um, a decent place to live for everyone. Um, nobody. Deserves to live on, on the street. Nobody deserves to lose their home because they're one check away from total disaster. Um, when we come into a place, uh, what we're trying to do is bring the American dream to families who deserve it. So, uh, how that happens and how we're able to do that is we vet our families. These are families who have to qualify for mortgages. They've got to put in the work, they've got to put in the sweat equity, they've got to show up and be present. They are partner families with Habitat. Let people know that um, Habitat exists. So when you see us at the, the, the craft festivals or 
we're popping it in or out or doing those things. That's community outreach one to allow people to remember that we're still in the community that we're trying to reach people. Um, these families, from the littlest to the oldest, they are participating in building that group. Um, I believe I've seen that most of you or a lot of you at um, the revitalize the God. We're talking community, we're talking revitalization, we're talking about neighborhoods. Most of you are old enough to remember neighborhoods. They don't exist as much anymore as they did when we were growing up. You knew families from, oh, first house, babies, high school, college, military, grandparents, neighborhoods. If we're talking about stabilizing our neighborhoods and having people that we get a chance to know. People that when you're gone will look out for the home, genuine neighborhoods. This is where Habitat comes in. We provide assistance for these homes that these families help build. These are families that are here for decades. These are family legacies that are changed. These are stable placeholders. The, the level of Stability can create in a child's life when they are able to know they're coming home, things aren't shifting. It changes the entire dynamic. So we're actually changing families one house at a time or nail at a time. Um, and that can't happen solo. That can't happen without community involvement. That can't happen without me. Um, it can't happen without me. And I, it requires a village. Warren County is the village. And I, I don't want I mean, you would anyone ever to think that their participation, no matter how small, is not needed, is not warranted. You come in and now you have stable home values because the neighborhood is not transitioning on a regular basis. These neighborhoods are growing and they're flourishing. When these Kids and these families and these mothers and fathers are able to provide something stable for their kids. They're putting their energy right back into where they live. They're not going out. It's not a transitional area. These are things that when we're talking economic development, we're talking <coughs> neighborhood revitalization, we're talking about habitat things. So we've just recently, um, let me simply say this we are dedicating our 18th house next Wednesday. Um, the second, and if you're free, I'll hope that you're able to come back. Um, please reach out to me. Um, I'll provide my contact information at the end. But this is the set of grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. Um, one of the grandchildren have, have left, um, but they're still raising one of the grandkids, and that level of stability changes his life as well. So um, that house that they is going to be next Wednesday. If you're free, please come by. So for 2023, we have approved three new families. Um, each family happens to have three kids, and all those kids are under the age of 10. These children will grow up there. They will live there. They will have that neighborhood camaraderie, that stability. We don't know who this kid is going to be. We don't know how that changes the world. If you get up every day knowing that you have somehow put something good into the world, you created this change. We're all getting older. We want stable children to be the leaders of our world. Let's give them a place to grow up. Um, so, um, I really want to know as you guys think of Habitat, <coughs> what you can do with it, and, and how, I'm sorry, so we can, mm -hmm. how you can help with Habitat. <coughs> volunteer. I'm always going to say that <coughs> volunteer. We have a number of committees. Volunteer is not a just for the field site. Volunteer is you have time to, to come in and be office help or, you know, maybe this is being at one of those outreach. Events. Um, I've had uh, at one of the events, I think it was at Ward County High School, and a, a lady came to me and she said, I can't help you guys. She said, I really want to come in again. Ma'am, 
just as you came up to me and said we can use there is no value for us on doing that. So please know the value you place on other people <coughs> comes back to you. So whether it's age, whether it's physical handicap, um, mental mental health, I can use anyone because everyone has value. So please don't forget that habitat exists and what we're putting out here comes right back to fast. It comes back to all of you in terms of business. Somebody's going to the bowling and the movies because this is where we live. Want to put that back out? You need in, you know, utilities. There, there's air service. No matter what's going on, when we stabilize our communities, it comes right back to everybody. Cars, like whatever you need, it's it's, it's here. I just really want everybody to understand that this is. In no way, shape, or form to put us above any organization that deals specifically with the property stricken families, but that is not the resource that we have. We are we don't give. This is not a gift. This is putting your money, shall I say your money where your mouth is you're working for your home. So as you guys go along in your life, really take the time to, to understand. Why volunteerism with habitat would make it such a big difference. Um, <laughs> I came in a year or so ago and I found out weirdly that there's a lot of people who have been on the board of habitat for humanity oh, in these past 30 years. Um, the thing that kind of threw me off was <clears throat> sometimes we allow our differences to get in the way. Of doing something that is so good. My father is a Republican, my mother is a Democrat, they've been married 51 years. My sister is a uh, Cowboys fan, I am a Amanda <laughs> fan. <laughs> Listen, you can't get along if you can love people that you don't agree with if the common goal is important. So, our board of directors, we have room for growth. Are we a perfect board? Not by any stretch of the imagination. But we show up because the goal is big enough and important enough to do so. So we have room on our board. We have uh, committees, other places for volunteers. Um, that executive director position is pretty cool. That's good. I'd rather be giving up there. But <laughs> there are so many, so many places that you can reach out and, and, and really be a part of. Um, there was a um, And I don't know if that slide is here, I don't really worry about that. When they talk about, um, we're talking about pets and how giving to a pet changes lives and gives you those feel goods. That's the same thing as volunteering. Um, to press upon your co workers, to press upon your employees the value of volunteering and how good that makes you feel what you're doing. It's not about just habitat. We have so many. Michelle, God wants to stand up. We have so many opportunities for volunteerism in the town that don't forget to, to reach out to your employees and say, hey, put some good back in your town. Whether you live in the town or you just work in the town, we do have people that are on our board that um, live outside of the town, but they work in the They worship here, and it matters here. So, um, I'm going to stop talking. I don't know what Katie uh, fulfilled my 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, but I just really want to thank you guys for allowing me to come here to share just a little bit about habitat. There's so much more than just houses. Yes, I, I do have a question. I'm like, who's going to be so we can we so habitat is a multitude of things. Thank you for that question. Um, we are building new homes. So our current project that's coming in up on is really part of a larger neighborhood revitalization project on Osage. Um, it's right behind Dunkin' Donuts. We will allow our families to be able to resources and get card. Things are an issue. It makes sense. It changes the entire fabric of that neighborhood. Um, we will likely have to demolish those homes, um, just to take that they're in. 
we can take houses and rehab them if they're in a condition enough to do so. So we, we do new homes, we do rehabs, we do um, we don't do rentals at this moment, and we don't do emergency houses. So yes, sir. Two questions. One, you said the the, the client has to qualify for be able to qualify for a mortgage. Do they have they have sweat equity in it? Do they have financial equity in it? Or financial um, they have to put financial resources to it. And secondly, I thought um, in, is the Blue Ridge Vocational Center still do they build a house every year like they used to? And is that a partner that you all use in order to place those houses in locations and find families? So okay, let's start with Blue Ridge for this last question. Um, they built our last, um, the house that we're dedicating next week. They did build that. I don't know if they're continuing to do that. Our habitat is probably not likely the road will, will travel now. Um, like every other organization, we're living, we're learning, we're growing. Um, we're adapting to successes and learning from failures. Uh, um, so that's what we're doing with that. But, um, I know they've done that in the past. This last house was built by Blue Ridge Technical Center, which we're absolutely grateful for. Um, and then sweat equity, financial ed education, so they have classes they need to take. So our goal is to not leave you out there or get you in this place without an advocate, assistance, or help. So you're going to get, each family will get a, a family advocate that walks through. We're talking uh, financial literacy classes, um, insurance, all of the things that come with home ownership, the things that, oh, they got a home, do they know what to do with it? Because guess what now? It's, there's no landlord to call when the roof, you know, something goes wrong. So we really take the time to educate our families that home ownership sounds great, but the, the, the liability is just as great as well. So we really take the time to make sure that they're educated and prepared. Do you have questions? Um, I had a, a comment. One of the uh, first homes in the built in the community. By Habitat, uh, Mr. Crowley actually was the, the lead guy with Habitat, and Eddie Morrison was the lead guy with the Rotary Club. And the Rotary Club built a duplex directly behind Spelunkers, yes. which is in the neighborhood you're still working in. And, and it was uh, so it was well appreciated by two families. And that was a big deal back 25, 30 years ago. Absolutely. So um, that neighborhood somehow got forgotten. People got older, people moved out. Um, kids bring life to things. So I'm kind of excited about these kids coming in. Um, but you're right. That was one of the first homes built in that, that family that owned that house. Is the proud owner of a half town. Paid off. Super excited. We want to continue to be able to do that. Um, the rest of the neighborhood just kind of fell down around them. Mm -hmm. Kind of got left left to uh, its own devices. Um, I think when you show care, when people around them, then somebody's left to and somebody's paying attention, somebody cares. So we want to bring a little love back into that neighborhood. Yes, ma'am. Does Horn County Habitat have any programs where you go in and potentially just do a repair or a clean up a yard or the smaller projects to again enhance the neighborhood. Absolutely. So we do repairs. Now our repairs, um, again, people think that you're sharing or not, our repairs are done based on subsidized rules. So people are always paying the pain according to what they can afford. The goal is to never put someone in a position to where their repairs or their mortgage is going to cause this right back in that cycle of eating or uh, uh, critical critical mass. So we do uh, weatherization, rush with kindness, which is outdoors. So we have someone, uh, we partnered last year with uh, the communitarians to clean up a home that was looking like it needed some love. The, the homeowners, you must be a homeowner, you must live in one county. So there are stipulations. It is not um, just out there, but uh, if there's weatherization issues, if there are neighborhood cleanup things, there are um, safety issues. You're getting older, you need ramps by all means, which helps us understanding that there is going to be a cost, um, but it is a low cost. We want people to feel like um, that they're still contributing to their lives in their homes, um, and that kind of
contribution allows us to reach out to more people. So we always, that is the way we possibly can. Um, with uh, heating, um, minor roofing, we have limits. Uh, we have about a five thousand dollar limit in terms of repair, but you still need to qualify to agree to part. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Listen, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> All right, our fifty fifty winner ticket is two zero zero five one three. George, okay. <laughs> hang out and I'll see you in just a second. Before you go, we have to do one more great thing. Um, every year, the club can apply for a district grant. It's a matching grant program where we give half the district grant, gives half um, to do some good in our neighborhood. So, Michelle, will you come up? This year, our project was Fresh Start, and it's laundry services for the thermal shelter so that their homeless clients can wash their clothes and be fresh, get a fresh start every day, every week. So we are presenting with 3300 to the thermal shelter. We're very happy to help you very happy. Thank you so much for everything that you do. We'll, we'll get it after the meeting. We'll okay. Come on up, Michelle, we'll get a picture after the meeting. All right. <laughs> All right. Next week, we are right back here, 12 noon. I don't miss it. I want to see everybody's faces here. I'm going to add two tables in the back. I want to see you all again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you'll stand with me and recite the four-way test. Other things, things we, we think, think say, say or do. First is the truth. Second, second is a fair law. Third, third will build goodwill, goodwill and better friendships. Thank you.